What's up everyone? It's your boy Norrenrad89 here bringing you another video and for today's video it's going to be another wrestling video. We recently had AEW Revolution 2024 happen and yes, Sting's last match happened and this is a very monumental pay-per-view and just a very emotional one for me because Sting's been wrestling for 38 years and I've pretty much watched him for like 30 plus years of my life watching this man wrestle so it was a very huge event for me in Revolution. It turned out that it, in general was a stacked card. Like we had, I believe it was nine or 10 matches on this card. It was stacked and a lot of them were really outstanding matches. But today you're gonna hear my thoughts on all these matches. I'm gonna go through them real quick, rattling through them. We're gonna rate them and also give the overall pay-per-view a rating as well. So let's do this, roll it. So right now, as it stands for me being a wrestling fan, I would consider AEW actually the top promotion right now. Like in terms of the content, what I enjoy watching, it's AEW the most right now. And if they're not the top, they are clearly right nipping on the heels of WWE because I believe they have better content and wrestlers going on right now in AEW. So today we're going to talk about AEW Revolution 2024 and let's get right down to it. We had a zero hour match that had Chris Statlander in it teaming up with Willow Nightingale going up against Julia Hart and Sky Blue. Julia Hart being our TBS champion and this was a fun match like it really is cool because these are four outstanding ladies that are part of the female roster at AEW. I really just wanted more just more high spots there was a little few clunky spots here and there but I think overall the tag match did what it was supposed to do it, a lot of the moments sky blue uh, she's really a standout I think as a girl that they need to rocket her to the moon because she is one of the best female wrestlers that is out right now. And overall, in terms of a rating, I'm going to give this match a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up, we had Christian Cage versus Daniel Garcia. And Christian Cage being our TNT champion, putting up his title against Daniel Garcia. This was a match that was full of, you know, shenanigans and antics. We know Christian Cage at this time point in his career, he is absolutely, you know, engaged in the heel persona and really doing some of the best work that he's ever done in his career. It's really fantastic. And Daniel Garcia is a homegrown AEW talent that is just a huge baby face right now. And the crowd loves him and stuff. In terms of the match itself, I actually think there could have been a little bit more shenanigans involved in this match. We could have got Adam Copeland involved. We could have had some of it twist little ending and stuff like that. But for what it was, I think it was still a entertaining match. I just think for me, Daniel Garcia and Christian Cage, like I said, a little bit more shenanigans. In terms of an overall rating, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars for this match. Next up, we had Eddie Kingston versus Brian Danielson, and this is a match that has a lot of story behind it, being that Eddie Kingston is trying to gain the respect of Brian Danielson. He's offering up his titles, you know, are on the line in this match, and Brian Danielson has already lost to Eddie Kingston, so this was a really story-oriented match, and I think a really fabulous one in terms of the way they played it out. It's very physical, very technical, and I think both the wrestlers, by this time, they really know each other, so it's just great to see them work together I know it's very um, common because like I said we've seen them work against each other a lot in triple threats in singles matches tag matches but that just makes them develop a really good relationship and like I said this match was just two fantastic wrestlers who are really good at their craft working together and for me a four out of five star match easy we have eddie kingston taking the win over brian danielson next up we have our eight man scramble match which was going to decide the next challenger for the aew title and we had you know wardlow in here christian lance archer we had hook in here um dante martin just like a whole host of characters in here and like for me this was definitely the weakest match on the card in terms of what it was. It's more of just a gimmick match. It was a, you know, big man slapping man meat type match. Then we had Taz talking about the, you know, then the mini men came in and we had the mini meat slap match and it was just very much high spot here, here, there, but it was very clunky and I don't think it was really worked out. I think they knew what they wanted to do, but there was just some mistiming and stuff like that but overall they got what they needed to get done Wardlow ended up winning the match the eight-man scramble and he is the challenger and the number one contender for the AEW title right now so for me but I'm gonna give this one a 2.5 out of five stars like I said it was the least entertaining match and the one that I just I just kind of wanted it to be over because I knew what the ending result was gonna be we already knew we were setting up Wardlow 
for being the next challenger. They just wanted to, you know, kind of involve more faces in this pay-per-view and stuff like that. And like I said, it was fun for a moment, but I think it overstayed its welcome pretty quickly. Next up, we have Orange Cassidy taking his AEW international title and defending it against Roderick Strong, which is another uh, storyline one, like a match that has a huge story behind it, really a lot of build up, and with ha Roderick Strong being part of the undisputed, you know, with the with Adam Cole and everything and that team, they're really kind of trying to take over with the whole villain and heel persona. And then we have Orange Cassidy, the beaten and battered up champion that is a fighting champion. You know, he's defended his AEW international title like 20 plus times. He's pretty much on just about every AEW live show or premium event. So this man is just grinding and grinding. And when you see him take off his jacket, he's got the back tape all around him. So this ended up being one of those classic matches of Roderick Strong targeting the weakness and the injured back of our champion and really whittling him down and stuff. And the fact that we played it off as the injured champion thing, that still helps protect Orange Cassidy's, you know, his legacy, what he's built and everything because Roderick Strong came in and was more of a technical wrestler, you know, damaging his back, going for the back breakers and Orange Cassidy did everything he could to put Roderick Strong away, but Roderick Strong ends up raising the title and is now our new AEW International Champion. Then we also had a really fun, you know, surprise as somebody came out of the audience, which actually took me quite by surprise because Kyle O'Reilly's back and we haven't seen him in like, I believe it was almost two years now and he has sporting a new look. So it was quite a surprise for sure. Next up, we have a tag match of FTR versus John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli. And we had John Moxley and Claudio coming out with the homage to the Legion of Doom wearing, you know, the animal and hockey gear with the spikes and everything. So that was really cool. And FTR, just to see them go against each other. My only negative with this is that we've seen them fight a lot over the recent weeks. But I know it's because a lot of people that are maybe AEW fans, they only watch the live events that are on TV and they don't pay for the pay-per-view so they're not going to get a chance to see this kind of final encounter between these two teams so that's why we've been seeing them kind of tussle over the last couple weeks a lot and they've been building up this feud but it's still really good to see these guys work because we're watching two or four of the greatest wrestlers right now in the game FTR being one of the best tag teams and Mox and Claudio just really Blackpool Combat Club one of my favorite factions in the game right now and they go toe-to-toe -to -toe. what I thought what was fascinating about this one is that the audience members were clearly on the side of FTR and chanting for them and wanting them to win this match. But Mox and Claudio end up putting Cash and Dax away with the, you know, the double choke outs and holding them both down and stuff. And the ref gets them, counts them out and stuff. So, yeah, that was a really fun match. I just think that maybe the ending, they could have probably swayed and changed the ending because either team could have won this match. And I think it would have been fine. But the audience was clearly more on the side of FTR. Even though I'm a bigger fan of Blackpool Combat Club, I might have played to the audience more in this match and let FTR take the W, but a four out of five stars easy for this tag match. Next up, we have Timeless Tony Storm defending her title against Diana Purazu, and this is another event that is really cool because these are two wrestlers that have been wrestling together for a really long time who know each other that have the same tattoo. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Like, I thought that was fascinating that they brought this in to the storyline. Then we had Timeless Tony Storm kind of edit and get a new change to her tattoo with a knife going through like the duck on her ankle so yeah this was a fantastic one and be it that it's playing into that old 1950s old technical style wrestling of old school style it really does play to the strengths of Diana and timeless Tony Storm the character that she's created right now which she is just epic she is really in the height of her game in terms of character work right now Tony Storm so I think it's fascinating to see these two go at it we had timeless Tony Storm retaining her title which I thought was the best thing to do but we still protected Deanna Parazzo she looked like an absolute champ going up against timeless and I don't think this is going to be the last time that we see these two clash and for me, it's going to be an easy 4.5 out of 5 stars for this match. Now, here we go. We are here to talk about two of the greatest wrestlers in the game right now. And they're both part of the Don Callis family. And to see Will Ospreay go up against Kanosuke Takeshita in this was, oh my god. These two dudes made some of this stuff look effortless. For real, if you do yourself a favor, if you could find or somehow get the footage of this match, Takeshita versus Osprey, if you can get this footage, you really need to go check it out today because do yourself a favor. You're going to watch two expertly classed wrestlers at the height of their game 
doing some of the greatest stuff you've ever seen. Like, for real, this is another match that on this card that could have gone either way, and I probably wouldn't have been upset, but I knew they were going to give this one to Osprey because this is his first pay-per-view match under the AEW banner. He's officially an AEW wrestler, so I didn't really think they were going to let him lose this match to Takeshita, even though it would have been understandable because he's a great wrestler, too. They gave this one to Will Ospreay, but for real, do yourself a favor and go check out this match today. Next up, we have the AEW World Title match was a triple threat match with Samoa Joe versus Adam Page versus Swerve Strickland. And this one for me, I really did enjoy this match, but the main problem I think with this one was just it coming after the Takeshita and Will Ospreay match and the fact that we knew kind of Sting was going to be the final match, which I thought was the the best logical decision to do for this pay-per-view was to have Sting's final match be the main event. So I think it was just kind of placement in the card that kind of hurt this match, to be honest. I might have actually started the pay-per-view with Swerve, Adam, and Samoa Joe, and that might have did them a better favor opening up the pay-per-view with the AEW world title match and then going on because this pay-per-view was just boom, boom, banger after banger, and the pace was pretty fast-paced, and they didn't stop. And for me... This one was a really good storybook match, and the wrestlers did a good job telling the story in the ring, and Samoa Joe dominated again, showing his dominance as a champion. I just think this one was more of a placement problem in terms of the card, but a solid 3.5 out of 5 star match. This is still a good match. Adam Page ended up going down to Samoa Joe getting and tapping out, but a lot of us think maybe that's just because he saw Swerve Strickland about to come in to break up that and wanted to stop Swerve from being a champion, so... This feud definitely isn't over between Adam Page and Swerve. Now we're here to talk about Sting's final match. We had Sting teaming up with Darby Allen, defending their AEW tag team titles against the Young Bucks. And I really think Matthew and Nicholas Jackson were the perfect villains, the perfect heels to go up against Sting and Darby Allen. This is, like I said, another match that it really played out perfectly because they started out the beginning of the match with a nice package where it was Sting sitting in like a theater watching a lot of his old footage from back in the day. This is a wrestler that's been wrestling for 38 years for NWA, for WCW, WWE, TNA, AEW. He's literally been New Japan Wrestling. Sting has been all over the world and worked under every banner and is really the model wrestler and model, you know, just citizen when it comes to thinking of a teammate, a partner, an employee, you know, a tag team partner, all those kind of things. Sting is really an icon, and truly, this match was fantastic. It was balls to the wall, had ladders, we had glass, we had chairs, we had Darby Allen taking one of the biggest, craziest bumps I've ever seen, going off of a ladder from the ring, crashing through the glass as Matthew Jackson saved Nicholas, pulling him off. Like, ah, oh, it was fantastic, just really great. Like, Darby Allen sacrificed his body, and you want to save those amazing, fantastic bumps for these moments, and it really was a match you will never forget. And Sting got to go out on the top as the tag team champions with Darby Allen. He they put them away with the Scorpion Deathlock, you know. Oh, so for real, to see a lot of the moments and those things that it's going to be the last time you see Sting no sell a special, you know what I mean? Or he went through a table. I think one of them put them through a table, a power bomb, and Sting just popped right back up and no sold it. So it. A lot of these iconic spots that we're just going to end up missing. Like, I'm not trying, I'm trying not to get emotional because, like I said, this is going to be the last time we see these moments from Sting. We actually had Sting's sons involved in this match, too, who came out and they had the old school Sting look like, you know, and one was dressed like the Wolfpack Sting. So, really, all kinds of shenanigans and all kinds of fun and pretty much going to be the easiest five star match I've ever seen because it was just so emotional, so gripping, and I really did go down perfectly. Like, besides, the only thing I can think of that might be a negative is they did cut Sting off at the end of the pay-per-view, but you could go on YouTube and you could check out the full thank you of him talking and what was said after the match and everything, but for real, Darby Allen and Sting going out on top as AEW World Champion, Tag Team Champions, and just seeing Sting think, you know, Greensboro one last time because that's a very iconic place where some of his greatest matches have taken place was really a special moment and in terms of my rating for AEW Revolution like overall the pay-per-view I would give it a 4.5 out of 5 this was nearly a perfect pay-per-view or a 4 out of 5 like it's really there it's just we had like that eight-man scramble some of the other matches I think it was just placement on the card but we had some really standout matches like I said Sting's last match 
Will Ospreay and Takeshita. You guys got to go out and check out that match. And another one is Orange Cassidy and Roderick Strong. Very much a standout match. Timeless Tony Storm and Deanna Parazzo. If you want to see two standout females, go at it. So there's a lot of fun to be had with this pay-per-view. Thanks for sticking around with me all for this video. I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you want more videos like this, please like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I post a video. But most importantly, y'all know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.